Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly Books True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and today we're going to be looking at who Terence Kelly is that is the person who allegedly abducted or kidnapped uh, Cleo Smith. I didn't report on this yesterday, even though so many of you sent me the links and tip-offs and things, because I wasn't that sure. Um, you know, some other tip offs showed that he had or says that he has two children, and that he's from Sydney, Australia. So I'm like, I just had to first make sure. Uh, if I'm not sure of something, I'd rather not say in case it turns out to be the wrong person. I believe that an Australian news channel actually had to issue a formal apology for posting pictures of two people who also have the same sort of name, spelt a little differently, and it wasn't actually him. So that's, that's not what we want to do is like plaster someone's face online and say this is the person when it when it isn't okay but let's get started Okay, so let's get started with this. <laughs> the man is right behind me. You're like, behind you. <laughs> um, so if you're not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get all things Grizzly Books, True Crime. It's a really great community. And if you would be so kind as to, hit the thumbs up. So this is, let's just move myself over. Cleo Smith's alleged abductor had a room full of dolls. That's so like headlines everywhere now. I looked at this, whew, as I said yesterday, and I'm like, I don't know. It's not like you can hope that it's a certain type of person, but I was hoping it wasn't, you know, because I don't know when I saw this man and all the dolls he collects and stuff. I'm like, oh, no, like it's just it just scared me. Of course, the man accused of abducting four year old Cleo Smith from her family tent and holding her captive for 18 days had a doll room inside his house. Terence Daryl. Kelly, so the, the wrong spelling of Terence was A-N-C-E that the other news channel posted. <laughs> they were like, this is the man. Okay, no, wait, my bad. This is the man. Okay, no, it's still not him. But apparently, this is the man. Terence Daryl Kelly was arrested by Western Australia WA police after detectives raided his locked Tonkin Crescent home. Apparently, 18B. Thank you, Grizzlies, to everyone who sent me the actual address at 12.46 a.m. on Wednesday local time and found the little girl alone inside a bedroom. Apparently, she was playing with dolls. Oh, a day later, he was charged with child abduction and appeared before Carnarvon Magistrates Court. WA Police Detective Senior Sergeant Cameron Blaine said Cleo was found in physically good health in a bedroom inside Mr. Kelly's house. The lights were on and she was playing with toys. I think uh, that's about all I want to say. This is still a matter that needs to go before the courts. There's certain aspects about what we saw that is going to be evidence, he said. Detectives declined to comment on whether dolls were found inside the house, with the head of the task force, uh, Rodia Superintendent Rod Wild, telling journalists that he didn't want to get into that. Okay, but it's all over the internet now. You might have to get into it now, but yep, there he is. Oh my word, he just is so scary. Since his arrest... Uh, Video has emerged of Mr. Kelly recording himself inside a room filled with dozens of dolls, some still in their packaging. The man also uploaded photos to Facebook in April 2020, taking a doll for a car drive, captioning the post, I love taking my dolls for drive arounds and doing their hair and taking selfies in public. In another post dated July 2020, Mr. Kelly is pictured wearing a Bratz doll shirt and holding a doll in each hand, commenting, nothing beats chilling at home with my Bratz dolls. A... Carnarvon, I just think the whole time I've had to say it, the Australian one. A Carnarvon toy world worker said the store had sold several dolls to the man over the years, which they would gift wrap. She did not know when the last time was that he had visited the store, but was checking CCTV footage, which went as far back as October 18th to provide to the police. Several times during his court appearance, Mr. Kelly asked journalists in the public gallery what they were staring at and told them where, when he got out, that he would come for them. Oh, we're throwing threats now. Dude, seriously. <laughs> he was remanded in custody and is due to appear in court again on December 6th. Neighbors described Mr. Kelly as a loner who lived in his public housing property by himself. In recent days, residents said he had, be hey, he had been coming and going from the house with groceries. He's been acting a bit strange lately. He would get in his car and uh, get in his car, drive that fast. 
Okay, one neighbor said, he doesn't have his dog out on the front, he has, has his dog out in the back, but for all this week he had his dog out on the front and he's been acting weird. Oh my word, dude. Anyway, okay, Shanika Dickerson, who was staying two homes down, said she was relieved Cleo had been found. It's very scary. This is where we live and young kids live here, she said. Another neighbor spoke of borrowing a lawnmower on Monday from Mr. Kelly and how he was acting normal. He'd say hello and ask for a smoke, she said. I didn't think he would be like that, but nobody thought that. WA Police Acting Commissioner Colonel Branch said mobile phone data and CCTV footage of a car entering Carnarvon the night Cleo vanished led police to raid Mr. Kelly's house. Now we know what the tip-off was. Or how they got to that house. It followed reports from two witnesses of a vehicle turning south off the road that leads to the remote uh, Quabba Blowholes campsite, which we did on map time, where Cleo was snatched around 3 a.m. on October 16th. The information acted on from Tuesday night onwards starts out really small and quickly snowballs, he said. There were car movements, there were phone movements, the jigsaw fit the puzzle. But it took really good intelligence analysts and detectives and specialists to look at all that information, put it together and go, you know what, that doesn't seem right to me. I've been doing this a long time and we're going to act on it. And that's how we get results. Forensic officers have spent the past two days combing Mr. Kelly's property, which included a gray parked, uh, a gray car parked in the carport that had no number plate. Shady, shady. More than 140 police officers were assigned to Cleo's case, with 63 working full time out of Carnarvon. Whew. So we, sorry, I'm like swallowing and breathing because I just find it really. Traumatizing. <laughs> a 36-year-old man has faced court, has faced court charged over the alleged abduction of four-year-old Cleo Smith in Western Australia. Terence Darrell Kelly was taken into custody and questioned before police re released a statement on Thursday saying he had been charged with various offences, including one count of forcibly taking a child under 16. Oh no. Given this matter is now before the court, police are unable to make any further comment on the charges at this stage, police said. Mr. Kelly briefly faced Carnarvon Magistrates Court and was remanded in custody for four weeks. According to the Australian, Kelly made several outbursts during the late afternoon hearing, including, I'm coming for you. Oh my word. We're all coming for you, bro. <laughs> Grizzlies. <laughs> he is said to have asked uh, the magistrate, what the F are the media doing here? To which the magistrate replied, it's an open court. Cleo was allegedly taken from the family tent while camping at Quabba Blowholes on October 16th and was rescued from a house in nearby Carnarvon just before 1 a.m. on Wednesday when detectives barged into the property. So yes, I was also looking at this footage and I wasn't too sure if it really would be this dude, but it, it is. It, that's what the news is going with. This is the man. Social media posts reveal photos of Kelly holding two Bratz toy dolls. Another picture shows a room full of toy dolls. Early on Thursday, lead investigator Detective Superintendent Rod Wilde told reporters the accused man had allegedly harmed himself twice, which had resulted in two trips to the hospital. Asked if Mr. Kelly was the driver of a car seen at 3 a.m. on the night Cleo vanished, Superintendent Wilde said, That hasn't been confirmed as yet, but certainly we would say that that car was significant and it was in the right time frame. Oh man, I feel so bad for her. Right. So they say, obviously, there's a process to go through with our child specialist interviewers that are here now. Depending on how she is, we intend to start that part of the investigation today. Ooh, my goodness. There's been a lot of it through this investigation. It's unhelpful. We see it's untrue. It only damages people. So the speculating and sharing wild theories online. That is not what we want to do, right? We're just reporting on the case. Oh, my word. Everyone, please keep those theories to yourself and don't go sticking them on social media. It's very unhelpful. The detective also confirmed that when police commissioner Chris Dawson and other officers walked into the local pub in Carnarvon on Wednesday night, they got a standing ovation. Shame, look at her with a balloon. Oh, shame, look at her sitting there smiling with her ice lolly. He's gone off to hospital again this morning, Mr. Blanche told Sunrise on the 7 Network. The important thing for police, if we're going to interview someone about offences as serious as this, we will need them in a condition where they have had a rest. They're in a good mental state and they've been fed. So we've got to make sure we give them the best opportunity to answer questions, and that's to ensure that the court process is validated if we get to that point. 
Mr. Kelly was pulled over in a car by police near Carnarvon about midnight and was arrested. Because Chloe was alo- Cleo, sorry, Cleo was alone in the house with a light on, playing with dolls. And here they say Mr. Kelly was pulled over in a car by police near Carnarvon about midnight and was arrested. So what was he doing? Detectives then went to the house and took Cleo out. While the $1 million reward offered by the WA government was unlikely to be claimed, given Cleo was found following solid police work rather than a specific tip-off, Mr. Blanche did not want to rule out the possibility. The police collected so much information from day one for those 18 days that they were able to trawl through and put that jigsaw puzzle together. Part of that jigsaw puzzle was information from the community. We're not going to discount that it's not going to be paid out, but really... It was good, hard detective and intelligence analyst work. It was literally a needle in a data haystack. Shame. Here's a screen grab from when they captured or rescued her, sorry. Not captured, rescued. In video footage released by police of Cleo's rescue, her hair appeared neat and clean. Her physical well-being seemed okay, Mr. Blanche said. But there's a lot of work to be done with a child of such a young age to understand what they've been through. Mr. Blanche said Cleo would have suffered some trauma being away from her family for 18 days. Yeah. Meanwhile, Cleo's mother, Ellie Smith, who posted on social media throughout the search in a bid to encourage people to come forward with information, has now made her Instagram and Facebook pages private. She and Cleo's stepfather, Jake Glidden, 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 were subjected to online abuse from people accusing them of being involved in their daughter's disappearance, despite police consistently saying that they were not suspects. Well, okay, okay, we have to give that public reassurance that fear can probably now go away, he said. Whew. All right. So, yeah, this was the picture of the man. Wow. I'm just looking at all these articles. We've got CNN on the case here, too, on the case. Whoa. All righty, so shame. So I'm not going to go through all the news articles now. I'm sure you've seen the news as well. I just wanted to just cover this briefly and tell you that now they know who this freaking person is. How the loner arrested over Cleo Smith's abduction was bashed in his cell by another prisoner as soon as he realized he was the alleged cat a kidnapper with attack putting him in hospital. He was allegedly attacked by another prisoner inside a police holding cell and has been taken to hospital, but that new article said that he attacked himself kind of thing. He harmed himself, so interesting. But maybe it's a bit of both, right? Whoa. They say as soon as he heard this bloke was arrested over that little Cleo, he blew up, beat him black and blue, the woman said. My goodness. Okay, so I'll report more on this in the next video. I just wanted to tell you the news for now. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe.